this video. In this video, we are going to attempt to make a propane tank. The reason I think that a propane tank is a good example sort of as a beginner uh, level of model is because it's a simple shape. It is basically a cylinder with a rounded top and a rounded bottom. And the handle is essentially a tube that's got uh, some holes cut out of it as well as the base. So the basic shapes here, or the booleans, as they're sometimes called in the computer modeling world, um, are fairly simple. And I can, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that you can actually create these shapes using uh, commands that are still pretty much prevalent across most modeling programs. The modeling program that I'm using is called Rhinoceros uh, 2.0. It's a very, very old copy. Um, there's, they're all the way up to, I think, Rhino 6 or 7 now. And most of the programs that are going to be available um, are not like Rhinoceros, but they do have pretty much all the same basic commands and concepts. All these different icons over here on the left side um, and all these different menu shortcuts up here uh, are is mostly what I'm going to be using, as well as a few keyboard commands. See this uh, line up here? It's, it's a gray bar. It says command. That's a command line for me to basically tell the program what to do with what I have uh, you know, active in the command windows. Um, over here on the top right is my perspective window. In this particular program, I hold down right click and I can zoom around wherever I want, up, down, below, you know, 360 degrees, 365 days a week, 24 seven. <laughs> and then I've got my right view window, which is the right side of this object, whatever I happen to have there, the front view of that object and the top view of that object. So just to demonstrate basically how it, most 3D programs are set up or 3D modeling programs are set up. Let me put a basic object in here to show you before we get into the propane tank, if you're new to this. I'm gonna go over here to this cube shape over here and in this program, I can click that and I can draw a cube. I'm just gonna draw one, it doesn't matter what size and shape. There's my cube. And you see here in 3D space, I can see all sides of my cube. Now this view over here is the right side of the cube, which is over here. And then I've got the front, which is right here, and the top, which is right here. So I'm not looking at the left side, the back, or the bottom of the cube, right? I'm looking at the right, front, and top. I can change these views, but for most purposes, a perspective view, a top, a front, and a right view is mostly all you, you're going to need, um, unless your size or front to back are different, and you need to get very specific on certain things. But <clears throat> I will say... A lot of the uh, rendering software and programs that are out there these days pretty much just use a perspective view, just like this. I just double clicked my perspective view and it opened it up to the whole page here. And most programs are gonna use uh, modeling that just occurs in this view. Um, a lot of the programs that are available today are actually more advanced than this program that I'm using, but I'm going to do this uh, with all four viewports so that you guys can see kind of what's going on from all angles and I can kind of explain it. Um, from a linear way and also a three-dimensional way, because that's how I learned. I came from a drafting background um, when I started getting into 3D modeling. This is back in my junior year in high school, so 2003 um, is where I learned to do all this stuff. And I've kept this program ever since. I got it back then, and I will use this forever if I can. Um, oops, that's my mouse flipping out there. Um, but that's what you can do in this program. You can also do a quick uh, render there, a shaded version, so you can see what your object looks like. If I right click it, I can see it from all angles, and I can even render the object. I haven't assigned any rendering parameters, but that's just a basic rendering so I can create still images of my object. Anyways, um, you see here, if you look in this bottom left corner right here of my perspective viewport, as I rotate, whoops, as I rotate the view, you see that thing in the corner moving around and it says X, Y, Z on it. No, it does not stand for examine your zipper. Those are the three axes of a three-dimensional space. So let me make this bigger. I don't know if that helps you see it, but over here in the bottom left, you have the Z axis, the Y axis, and the X axis. What is that? What are we talking about? Well, in geometry or in trigonometry or calculus or whatever in, in math, you might use these coordinates to figure out uh, lines and curves and shapes and directions of travel of objects and things like that. But in this space, it helps us define what we're doing where so that the computer knows what we want where. And so this green line you see here is the y-axis. You see as I turn it, that turns with it. The red line is the x-axis. And the main thing you just need to remember is the y-axis 
pretty much denotes the uh, sort of up and down or the longitude, the vertical. And that's vertical if you're looking down on the object, like from the top, right? And the x-axis is the horizontal or the longitudinal, the left to right. I keep doing, I keep accidentally telling it to do a render, sorry. Um, and the z-axis, as you can see, is the up and towards you or that third dimension. If we only had a y dimension and an x dimension, and we were drawing only y and x dimensional plane, we'd have a 2D image, like a sketch or a drawing or a drafted image. But because we're working in three dimensions, we have this extra plane of existence, this z. So we have y, x, and z, and that helps us define the space that we're working in, and it helps the computer or the program know what we want. And we have uh, parameters and, and even numbers and math and things we can use to figure out exactly where we want stuff if we need to get that specific, okay? Um, you'll see kind of what I'm getting at as we build here, but that is the basics of what this program is and how it starts. So let's get into building ourselves a propane tank. First thing we need to do is we need to determine if we want to build this propane tank. I'm gonna be building this one. It's a 20 gallon propane tank. I'm gonna make a basic version, then I'm gonna make a more advanced version. And we need to figure out if we wanna build this true to life size, which uh, I already looked at the dimensions. Um, you can see them right here. They, a 20 pound propane tank is about 12 and a half inches wide by about 18 inches tall. So if I wanted to build this in true to life scale, I could model it in my program, 12 and a half inches wide and 18 inches tall. But when I went to print, if I go to print this, if I want to 3D print this as an accessory for say action figures, I would need to scale it down to be 1 12th or 1 6th scale. So I can build this true to life scale, but then when I go to print it, I'd have to remember to, div to, to shrink it down by 12, um, per, uh, 12 points to make it actually the right scale for figures or six points if I'm doing it for six scale. So I'm gonna build this to scale so that uh, once I make the STL file available for all of you, you won't have to do any of that scaling down of the object. I'm gonna build it in scale rather than full scale. So I'm gonna take those dimensions of 12 and a half by 18 and I'm going to divide them by 12 to get the actual size that I build it at so that it's already 1 12 scale. All right, that's, if you're not confused yet, just hang in there. I got lots more to confuse you with. So um, I'm gonna pull out the trusty calculator. And if I take 12.5 divided by 12, I get one point, we'll call it 1.04 as my width dimension of the cylinder for the propane, sweet lady propane. And if I take 18 and I divide it by 12, we get 1.5, which is my height. So a 112 scale 20 gallon or 20 pound propane tank is 1.04 inches wide by 1.5 inches tall. 1.05 by 1.5, uh, that's pointless math. Anyways, <laughs> um, I am going to build according to those dimensions. And all the other specific dimensions I'm not gonna worry about because I'm not trying to make this an actually functioning, you know, 112 scale propane tank. I am going to basically guess at everything else visually and proportionally to where I'm comfortable with it. And uh, you'll see what I mean as we move here. But let's just draw ourselves some ref like a reference square so we know the size we need to be building in. Doing something like that really helps me visualize. So before I draw that square though, I need to open a uh, inches file. So I'm gonna go file, new, and I'm not gonna save the changes and I'm going to open an inches folder, or an inches project, excuse me. See, I can do this in centimeters, feet, inches, meters, and millimeters. I'm going to do this one in inches, because I'm in America, where we don't use the metric system, because we're crazy. <laughs> now I have this in inches, and I'm going to go on my front view here, and draw myself my reference rectangle, if you will. I'm going to take this command over here, which is a polyline, or it's line segments connected by dots, basically. And I'm going to start at my the center of my axis here, which is the Y and the X in this viewport. And I'm going to type zero comma zero because I'm starting from this zero point. The X axis goes up in this direction and down in this direction. So we've got negative one, negative two, negative three, and then, or I'm sorry, I totally said that backwards. One, two, and three, and then negative one, two, and three. Same thing with the Y direction. I've got one, two, and three, negative one, two, and three. So if I want this other point, 
that I'm dragging around of this line to end up in a very specific location, up in this command line up here that I showed you before, I can type in, uh, you know, one, one, and the point will end up here. Or I can type in one, two, and the point will end up there, right? So in this case, I'm going to give it actually a size that I want the line to be rather than a point. Remember what our width was? It was 1.04. I typed that up here in the command line. You can see that 1.04 up here. I'm going to hit enter. And then it gives me this line that doesn't change size. That is exactly 1.04 inches wide. And I have this command on that's called ortho, which is orthographic projection, meaning it will it will continue to move the object every 15 degrees. I have it assigned to do that. You might be able to assign yours to do, you know, every 45 degrees or every 90 degrees if you want. If you wanted to just tell you, uh, show you every 90 degrees, I've got this to orthographically project the line every 15 degrees, basically so I can't mess up the, the straightness of the line. So I've got a line that is 1.04 inches wide that I'm dragging around here every 15 degrees. Well, I want it to be flat. Boom. So I clicked. Now I have another line that's starting from this point because it's a polyline. It's going point to point. And I'm going to do my height now. I want it to be, what was the height? 1.5 inches. It's up here in the command line. Enter. Now I have a line that is 1.5 inches that I am moving around. I want that to go up. So I'm going to use my orthographic projection helper here to help me make it perfectly up and down. And I'm going to click. And I'm going to do another one at 1.04. And I'm going to click over here to the left. And then I'm just going to move my mouse down here and close that. So now I have this rectangle. Boom. This beautiful rectangle to help me kind of make sure I stay within this certain size and shape that I need to to make this propane tank. Confused yet? Me too. This is just to uh, get, us, get us going and get the concepts in your head as I build so you know why I'm thinking the way that I'm thinking, okay? Bear with me here. So <clears throat> this tank is 12 and a half inches wide. If I look at this visually, it looks like, okay, again, I'm doing this kind of visually proportionately here. It looks like it's a little bit taller uh, from maybe like the top of this curve to the bottom of this curve than it is wide. Like it's not a square that's been rounded off, if that makes sense to you, or a cube that's been rounded off. It's the cylinder that has a bulbous top and a bulbous bottom. There's a lot of ways I could go about making this shape. I'm going to show you a really, really cool way to revolve a cross-section curve, which sounds really fancy, but it's actually pretty simple. It's a powerful command in the program, but it's simple to set up. And what I'm getting at is I'm going to basically draw an outline of this tank, right? I have Photoshop pulled up here so I can show you. Um, I'm going to basically draw an outline. Let me get a pen here. I'm gonna draw the outline of this tank in the program perfectly using CAD, right? The CAD the program has. But what I'm really gonna do is after I draw that, because it's easier to draw the whole thing, and then do this, cut half of it off. I really only want half of it drawn. So I'm gonna draw perfectly half of this tank, right? I'm gonna draw the whole thing because it's faster, and then I'm gonna cut half of it off. And then the fancy, fancy, fancy stuff begins, all right? And let me show you how I'm going to do that. So, basically, we're going to, uh, where is it? Okay, we are going to grab this tool, this ellipse tool up here. I have this, this circle and I have this ellipse. I can draw an ellipse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the midpoint here. I have this other command on called osnap, where I can choose to have the program tell me where certain points are without having to guess or do complex math, like find out all the grid math to get it in the perfect spot. I have these O snaps that can snap on to where uh, I need it to go. So I need it to be in the middle. And then let me make this bigger so you can see what I'm doing. And I need it to be in the middle here. I'm going to click that and I'm going to drag the radius of this ellipse over. Right? See how I have this line again, this sort of polyline? This isn't a polyline. This is the start of an ellipse. This, I'm helping define the radius of the ellipse. So I have the center point on this midpoint. And then I'm coming over to this corner and I'm going to click. And then I'm going to do the second radius. Ah, uh -huh. see that? I did that first radius, now I'm going to do the second radius. And that's how you can create, you know, uh, an, an oblong sphere uh, circle, basically, or an ellipse. And I'm going to guess here. So I could go bigger, I could go smaller, but I'm kind of trying to emulate 
this curve here, right? That's what I'm trying to do is emulate this curve. So let me grab that ellipse again and start over from the middle, do the first radius, and then kind of guess here. What do, what do you think? Do you think it looks good taller, shorter? I think, I feel like right about there is probably good. I'm gonna do that. And so now I have this ellipse. I don't clearly need this whole ellipse. I'm trying to basically draw, right? What this propane tank looks from the side. Draw what it draw what it looks draw it. I can't talk right now. <laughs> but I'm I'm gonna trying to draw the, what the propane tank looks like from the side. So I need this upper piece, and then I also need one on the bottom. Now this is the whole height of this 1.5 inches here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these lines I drew to split this ellipse in half, so I can have two lines that are exactly what I want them to be. So I am going to go over here to this command called split, and I'm going, it says up here in the command line, it tells you what to do next. It says select objects to split. I want to split this ellipse. And then I'm going to hit enter. And then it says select cutting objects. So I can have another object intersect this at certain points and cut the object. So now I'm gonna select this box I drew because it's intersecting it where I want it cut. And then I'm gonna enter. And guess what? I have two halves of an ellipse now, right? Here's one half, here's the other half. Now it's not one solid object or one solid line, it's two lines. So now I can take part of it and I can hit the M in the command line and enter and I can move this around. Check it out. So I, I'm, I'm using the shapes and the pre-programmed presets in the program to basically assist in my drawing here or assist in the establishing of what this would look like if I sliced through the propane tank, right? So if I imagine slicing through this, you know, like they have that YouTube channel, what's inside. If I slice through this to see what's inside, I'm basically tracing out the edge of the tank. So that's what I'm doing here is I created the, sh the basic shape, I cut it in half, and I move that shape down. So now, what I want to do is I want to go draw myself a reference line here from this midpoint. I want to go, to, uh, was it 1.04 was the width, and go right there and move this, move these points, excuse me, to where they are exactly the width of the object apart from top to bottom. And I'm going to move this whole thing down. What I do is I selected by doing this highlight to all of these and I hit move again and I'm moving this to where visually it kind of makes sense for me right it's not all the way up or down on this entire dimension it's kind of lower middle of it and so now I've got this tank uh, you know shape here that I'm moving up and down that seems pretty good what do you think I feel like it needs to be a little taller so I'm going to move this up Make it a little bit taller. Eh, maybe not. Maybe that's too high. Let me see. Maybe the whole thing's too high. This is where some guesswork comes in, right? This is where you kind of just try to feel it out here. Seems about right to me. Yeah. So I have these reference lines, right? I'm not going to cut these up. So I'm going to take this box that I drew. And now that I have one, two, three, four points, and they're all lined up with each other, I'm going to hide this box for now. I don't need it. I'm going to click hide. It goes away, and I don't need this reference point anymore, just yet. So now I need to draw these side pieces. So I'm gonna click my polyline again, and I'm gonna go point to point. And I'm gonna hit enter to end it, and I'm gonna start the command again. And I'm gonna go over here and go point to point. So now what I've got, you can see here, is on from on the front view plane, right? The Z and X axis of the front view plane, I've drawn this cylinder shape as a cross section. Now we're gonna do something that you might think makes no sense, but it actually makes perfect sense. I'm gonna draw a polyline and I'm gonna cut it in half. So I drew this line down the middle and now I'm going to use this command called trim. And I'm going, it tells me select cutting objects. I'm gonna use this line to cut, hit enter, and then I'm gonna trim this and this. And then I'm gonna delete this. And now we have half of a protein, propane tank. You're like, wait a minute, aren't we going backwards now? No, we're not, because I'm gonna use a really fancy command 
called a rail revolve. And what this means is you pick basically a straight line or a curve, and then you have a cross section shape that will follow that line or curve and kind of drag out the shape from the line that you define. And that you're like, wait, what? what, what are you talking about? Well, the best example I can think of before I show you this is like a giant bubble. You know how you might um, put some soapy water in a pan and make a wire uh, circle out of a coat hanger and dip the coat hanger in a pan and then raise up that coat hanger and a bubble forms out of the circle of that coat hanger? That's what we're gonna do here with this shape. Imagine these three lines here that I just selected I'm just holding down shift and selecting them. Click, shift, click, shift, click. And I'm gonna join them together to make one line. Right here is the join command, boom. So up here in the command line, it tells me three curves were joined into one curve. So now if I click on this, it's one line. Right here, this is my rail. This is a something for the program to know where I need to be rotating this curve. So basically, we're gonna take this curve kind of like that bubble making hoop in a soapy water and rotate it around this rail and it's going to draw a surface that maintains this shape. It sounds complex, but it's very simple, okay? So I'm gonna go over here to my surface modeling tools and there's all these different commands over here that are super fancy that I can use. There's this one right here called Revolve or Rail Revolve. I'm gonna click on it. You see how it's got a line going down the middle of like an hourglass shaped object? That's giving you basically a preview of what it can do. So I'm gonna click on that. And up here in the command line, it says select curves to revolve, meaning the things I'm gonna drag out. I'm gonna select this curve. That's my bubble maker, if you will. And then I'm going to hit enter. And then I am going to, it says start of revolve axis. So the axis that it needs to turn around. I'm going to start the axis here, like on a car, this would be the axle, and you have a wheel up here and a wheel down here, and it'll be rotating around in a circle around this rod in the middle. It says start of revolve axis. I'm gonna click the top, and I'm gonna click the bottom. And now it asks me, how complex do I want this to get? Let me zoom in here really quick. It asks me, how complex do I want to get? I can have more control points or less control points, basically how detailed do I want the surface to get? And then it has a start and end of angle. And I want this to go 360 degrees, rotate all the way around this axis. So I'm gonna leave it at 360. I could say 180 and it would go halfway, but I don't need that. I need 360 degrees. And 10 control points is fine. You don't need to get crazy with this. Um, this is pretty advanced. Like if you know what this is for and what it what you need it to be, you'll know what you need to put in. If you don't, probably just leaving it alone is just fine. So this is where I need it to be. I'm gonna hit okay and just watch, just watch what happens in this viewport. Boom. Look at this, let me zoom out. Okay, so in our top view, we have this big circle with an X through it. And our side view, we have this shape with a couple of lines through it. And we have the same shape over here. Up here, in our perspective view, we have a three-dimensional shape that resembles a propane tank. Look at that. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Do you understand what I did? I drew half of the shape, I gave it an axis, and I revolved that shape or that line around, and it drew a surface for me. When I render this, you'll see what I did. Boom. There it is. It drew this surface for me from just a couple of lines. Pretty powerful stuff. Now, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do right now is I am going to take this and I'm gonna hide this object, okay? Because I'm gonna show you an alternate method uh, that is sometimes not as uh, gonna be as good, but your program may prefer this method. This is why it's good to know kind of alternate methods, okay? Over here in the solids, uh, where I can, or booleans as they're called sometimes, when they say boolean, they just mean basically solid watertight object or object that is complete and all edges are attached to all the other edges. I have a cube, but if I hold this down, I get other shapes. I get a sphere, I get an ellipsoid, 
Um, I get a paraboloid, which is like part of an ellipse. I get a cone, I get a truncated cone, which is a cone with its tip cut off. I get a cylinder, a tube, a torus, which is basically a donut. Um, or I can make pipes using lines. I can draw a bunch of lines and then turn them into pipes. And then I can take, um, I can extrude a planar curve, which is another version of what I kind of just did where I can draw a line and just shoot it out into space and make this ever continuing surface. Or I can take a surface and do the same thing and make a solid object, which I'll show you in another video, but there's a lot of really powerful commands right here. Right now, I'm just gonna use the cylinder command. We'll use the uh, tube command later, but the cylinder command is the one that I think is uh, maybe a shortcut to making a propane cylinder. So let's cylinder, and I'm gonna use my snap two point here over here in the perspective view, and I'm going to select this quadrant, which, cause it says a quadrant because we have an, this is like, it's the program is imagining that this whole ellipse shape is still here. And this is a quadrant, that's a quadrant, this would be a quadrant, and that would be a quadrant. One, two, three, four quadrants of an ellipse. So I'm gonna select this quadrant down here, and I am going to drag out the radius, right? So if I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to my top view where I can see the radius, right? And you see what's happening down here? See how that's at an angle there? It's because my O-snap protocol is snapping to the line I've already drawn, which I don't want. That's that's no, no bueno, not good. So I'm gonna turn the O-snap off. I'm gonna say disable. And now when I drag it out, it doesn't go crazy. It stays flat from the top view. So now I'm gonna just I'm just gonna do this by feel. I'm not gonna put in a number. I'm just gonna kind of visualize. I want the radius to stop right there. I'm gonna click, and then it automatically cre starts to create a cylinder and turns the direction my mouse was in. So now I'm gonna move to another view. I'm gonna move to my front view, and look at that. So now I can select the height and see it's still orthographically turning it every 15 degrees every time I move the mouse. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Um, now from this view, I can stretch out the height that I want this cylinder at. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my O-snap back on so I can get it exactly that height. Go to O-snap and I'm gonna undisable it. And then I'm going to, boom, pick that perpendicular point because it's going from this quadrant up to this quadrant. So it's telling me uh, if I select over here in the perspective, it's calling it a quadrant. If I select over here in the front, it's telling me quadrant or perpendicular right? But either one is the same basically direction from where I started. So I'm going to highlight it here. I'm going to click it. And now I have a cylinder. Let me highlight, let me uh, render this really quick. There's the cylinder. Whoops. There's the cylinder that I created. Now, obviously, this needs the curves, curvature and all that stuff. So what I can do to this is I can do use a command called fillet or fillet, right? There's this solid over over here, this little round over edge. It says fillet surface or fillet surface. A lot of times in the drafting world or the CAD world, guys will say fillet even though it's fillet, like you're slicing off the edge of something. I will click this and it tells me, select the first surface to fillet. Well, I'm gonna select this top of the cylinder and then it says select the second surface to fillet. It before or fill it, fill it, fill a. <laughs> before I do this, I can tell it right here. It says radius. I can tell it how big I want that fillet or fillet to be right here. If I say one, the radius is going to be the whole width of the cylinder because this is one unit right here because I'm doing this in inches. So I want it to be smaller. I want it to be like, let's say a quarter of an inch. So I can now type in a numeric value to tell it how big or small I want that fillet to be. So I'm gonna type in 0.25 or one quarter, right? One quarter of a hole, enter. Now I'm gonna select my second surface and it will go do a fillet that is one quarter of a radius all the way around, boom. Check it out. It just filleted that edge all the way around. And now it's, it's a, if you were to take a, from the side view here, if you were to complete this circle, the radius of that circle would be 0.25. That's the number I gave it. <clears throat> I'm gonna undo this and show you like how you can get a different number. I'm gonna control Z it. And then I'm gonna go fillet again. I'm gonna select 0.125, which is half of 0.25. That's one eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna select the first surface and I'm gonna select the second surface. Boom. And then there is our smaller fillet, fillet of cylinder. 
it's a new delicacy, filet of cylinder. I'm gonna undo that. But you see how if I am to, let's say, let's go 0.375, which is in three eighths of an inch, and we do it here and we do it here, that's not bad, right? That looks pretty good. But if you look over here in the front view where we drew our curve, right? The curve doesn't really match the fillet because the radius isn't correct because we have this ellipsoid shape rather than a round over shape and a flat and a flat, right? So this is why I showed you to do it this way. There's an, another way that I'm not gonna do in this program, which is basically solid modeling or mesh modeling that this program doesn't really do very well, um, where you can just create a cube and just start defining the shape by pushing things in and moving things around, which may be faster for you. But for me, because my brain thinks in sort of layers and dimensions, this is a little bit faster for me. So this is the way that I would do it. I'm gonna delete the cylinder that we don't need. Boom, or delete surfaces that we don't need. And drawing the cross section and revolving it, you see was really quick and much cleaner. I'm gonna unhide all these objects. And so now we're back to where I have the cylinder that is the correct proportional shape as we see in our picture here. And I've got my sort of, you know, uh, extents of the object to where I need to keep the dimensions inside of. So now we're gonna move on to the base and the top of the handle. So this is basically, if we were to, let's just imagine for a sec, if these open spaces were not here, right? And this cutout space in the front for the nozzle to come through was not here, what would this shape be? What Boolean would it be? It'd be a tube, right? With a really thin wall. And then you could cut out these shapes out of that tube, right? Well, that's what I'm gonna do. So if I go over here to our solids and I go to the tube command, boom. Now I'm gonna use my O snap and I'm gonna select the center or the quadrant, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can, if I go to the edge, it'll let me select center. Oh no, it won't, Never mind. that's on a 2D plane. I'm gonna select uh, in point or quadrant, boom. And I'm gonna, uh, you're gonna be able to pick two radiuses because you need to pick the outer radius of the tube and the inner radius of the tube. I can enter a numerical value you see up here and the radius, and I could also give it a diameter if I wanted to. Um, I can give it a radius or a diameter and it will make it exactly that. Now, because we're kind of doing this visually and I'm just visualizing things, I'm gonna just kind of guess at where I want it to be. I'm gonna turn off the O snap um, and I'm gonna kind of guess what looks right for the the top handle as far as width. And I'm looking down here in this front view, as I'm dragging it in the top view, you see it getting wider and smaller and wider and smaller. And what looks right to you? That looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna click that radius for my outer radius. And look at that. I'm allowed to drag a second radius. I can go outside of it or inside of it. So we want a thin wall. So I don't want it to be too thin though, because if it's too thin, it won't 3D print right, right? So I might have to kind of exaggerate the thickness of the wall for the sake of 3D printing. So I'm gonna go a little bit thicker, like this is probably where it really should be, but I'm gonna go a little thicker. I'm gonna click, and then I have the same thing that cylinder command did before, I have, but I have it with a tube, and I can drag out the height of my tube wherever I want it. So I want it to go all the way to the top um, of this, this drawing reference that I drew, but you see I started my tube at the top of this paraboloid or this ellipse and it's not going to go through it so i'm actually going to drag it past this dimension then i'm going to click it i'm going to hit m for move enter and i'm going to drag it down straight until i get that top lined up and it is intersecting the bottom or the top excuse me the top of the curve so now it's intersecting and i can show you how to make this one object later when we're done uh, but for now, we're just gonna deal with the basic shapes. So now that I'm looking at this rendered, it looks a little bit too big, right? So I'm gonna redo it and I'm gonna do it smaller. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this tube here as a reference, a visual reference for me, so that I know that to make it smaller. So let me grab the tube command again, go to tube, click this quad, let me turn my O snap back on so I can select a quadrant. 
I'm turn it back off so it doesn't get distracted. And I'm gonna make this a little smaller. I'm gonna to go to the outside, or to I'm gonna have the outside of my new one be to the inside of the old one. See how I'm lining it up on the inside of the old one? Boom, now I'm doing my second one. Boom, now I'm dragging it up. Boom, and now I'm gonna slide it down into the same position. Now I'm gonna select the one on the outside <coughs> and I'm going to delete it. Boom, let's see what that looks like. That looks better, what do you think? Does that look better to you? I think it does. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna do the one on the bottom. So this one is some more guesswork. I'm gonna do a two, I'm gonna select the quadrant on the bottom and you can do this in any viewport. I'm gonna go over here to this right side viewport and select the quadrant and then I'm gonna go back up here. Now that it's selected, it doesn't matter what window I go to, it, the program has an anchor point for me to size my object and it's not gonna move my object around. So I selected it over here because I can see it over here clearly. Now I'm gonna go up here and pick my width. I'm gonna guess that <coughs> that's probably about right. And I'm gonna drag, or I'm gonna do my second width. Boom, and then I'm gonna drag it up and then I'm gonna move it down. And then boom, boom. That looks pretty good. What do you think? I'm pretty happy with that. I don't need to get super fancy here. So there is our basic propane tank shapes. We drew a cross-section curve. We revolved it to create this sort of complex surface shape. We used, we made two tubes, and now we're gonna add some detail, all right? Um, so I just wanna focus on this top, this top tube right now. So I'm gonna highlight everything and then unhighlight that tube, and I'm going to hide all of that. So I just have this top section floating there in space, all alone. And what I'm gonna do is I now need to basically cut out this big open area. It's, we're gonna do a fancy command called a Boolean difference. So basically, I'm gonna take an object that is roughly the, the size or width of that um, space or make an object, uh, depending on what we need to do, and I'm going to subtract the volume of that object from the volume of this other object. And in this top view here is where I'm gonna basically guess. So let me show you. I can take a cube and I can do it real fast, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the fast way that I'm gonna show you the maybe more accurate way. So I can take a cube over here and I can kind of, let's, I can kind of guess here. I'm gonna turn off my O snap. And I'm gonna say that handle started probably about here and went to about here, or that opening, excuse me, started about here and went to here. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna drag the width of my cube over here, click, and then I'm gonna drag it because it always, everything starts on the lowest uh, plane or the lowest axis. I'm gonna drag it up through, through the dimension or through the volume of the other object. Now, if we look in the 3D view, we have this tube being intersected by a cube. Why? Well, we can do, these are, uh, the program would define these as two completely um, solid objects, right? They're, all the edges connect, all the edges are solid, it's enclosed, you could fill it with water and water wouldn't come out, right? So this, and the, the programs define these as Booleans or solid surface, or solid objects. This is a Boolean even though it's a tube, and this is a Boolean even though it's a cube. And these two Booleans are intersecting, and I want to delete this shape out of this shape. So I'm gonna go over to here. These two circles are called a Boolean union. I'm going to hold that down and I get other options. I get Boolean difference. I'm gonna select the thing I want to stay, which is the tube. I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm gonna select the thing I want to subtract, which is the cube, and I'm gonna hit enter. Check that out. It just subtracted that shape. Now I can delete that and I have that shape, the basic shape. But you notice how like, oops, you notice how you have this sort of like uh, moon shape here where this kind of points forward. It kind of should go flat this way, right? I'll show you how to do that. You're gonna have to draw that shape, another cross section to create another Boolean to cut it out. But let's unhide all of our stuff really quick. So we can see kind of what that looks like. Look at that. Looking real propane-y, huh? 
Let's do this. Kind of starting to look like Sweet Lady Propane, huh? All right. So I'm going to control Z, back this up. I am going to delete that and I'm going to show you a more advanced way. I'm going to make this top view big because what I want to do now is I want to draw what I want to cut out of this shape. I'm going to take this polyline and I am going to, I'm going to just kind of, kind of do this by eye. I'm going to go up like, let's see, I'm going to turn my ortho off so I can get a proper cut. There we go. Now I have this line over here. I want it to be in the same place over here. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to turn my O snap back on, oops, and my ortho back on, and I am going to select this polyline, and I'm going to go up here to this menu command, and I'm going to select transform, and I'm going to say mirror, and I'm going to select a center point across this, this circle or this tube, which is the center. If I can get to the center again, there we go. See how it's selecting center? I click that, and now, whoa, look at that. It's orthographically projecting every 15 degrees wherever I roam here, wherever I may roam, and I can click it where I want it to be. And it's it's basically mirroring it, mirroring it against wherever I place my mouse. So I am going to go here and click, boom. Look at this, now I have two lines. They're gonna cut through this in the space that, in the place that I want them to. Now I need to make this into an entire cross section to cut through this and have it uh, work the first time. So I'm gonna take another polyline. I'm gonna connect these two lines and I'm gonna draw a line. It doesn't really matter here that connects these. It doesn't matter if this is off. The only lines that matter are this one and this one. Then I'm gonna take these lines that I just drew. I'm gonna select them all and I'm going to join them. So if you look back here in our 3D view, I have this object, and because I'm drawing it in the top view over here, it's getting drawn on the lowest possible axis, which you can see this little line down here in the front view and in the right view. It's getting drawn on that plane of existence here in the 3D world. That's fine. So I'm drawing it up here, and I connected all these. So now I have this cross section I'm going to now make this a surface, and I'm going to extrude it up through this. What am I talking about? Well, let's take these lines that I drew, let's go over here to the surface commands, and I'm gonna click on create surface from planar curves, because all these curves or these lines that I drew are on the same planar surface. Click this, boom, check it out. I now have a surface that's kind of, you know, in the shape of a Superman symbol. Now I can go over here to my top view because I want this to extrude towards me or through this object. So I'm gonna do it from the top view. You can do it in the perspective view as well, but you'll see what happens in the perspective view as I do it in the top view. I'm gonna select this surface that I just made. I'm going to go to my, my uh, solid objects or Boolean selections. And remember this command over here where it says extrude surface. I'm gonna click that and then Check it out. It is creating that sort of bubble effect, that bubble from the wire effect, pulling out that surface and that shape so that it is a big solid object. And I'm gonna drag it past the top of the tube so it knows where to cut through. Boom. And now I have this funky, oops, I have this funky shape going on. Before it was just a, a rectangular cube, now I have this. I am going to subtract this from this. I'm gonna to go to my Boolean. I'm gonna to go to my Boolean difference. I'm gonna select the object I want to keep, hit enter, select the object I want to subtract, hit enter. Oops, let me do that again. First, I didn't hit enter correctly. And then second, boom, there we go. So it's subtracted. You can see in the top view, it doesn't complete that circle there. In the perspective, it doesn't. So if I take this object and I delete it, we still have the lines I drew, I can delete those. And now it looks a little bit more appropriate, don't you think? If I unhide my objects, I zoom out, and we take a look, we got the basis for a propane tank. Look at that. So now we're gonna apply the same principle I just used to cutting out this open space for the nozzle to cutting out these handle shapes. Now, I'm not gonna get super fancy with this and do this sort of bent over thing where you have like this grip, that's what that's for. 
um, you could get that detailed, but for 3D printing purposes in this scale, we don't need to get that detailed. So I'm gonna keep this very basic. Um, so I am going to just cut out these basic shapes, cut out a circle on this side and cut and use some rectangles and slide them in here to cut it out of this side. Also, if you notice on these holes that are cut out here, the corners are rounded, kind of like a filleted edge. We can use the solid object that we cut out of this um, to get this round over shape on these edges, right? What I'm talking about is this, where it rounds over right here, right? It rounds over on these corners. We can create a rectangular cube and intersect it into this, and we can round over the edges of that cube so that when we subtract it from this object, we get these rounded over holes, okay? What am I talking about? Let me show you what I mean. Up here, <clears throat> let me um, draw myself. I'm gonna go from the right side view here on this one, and I'm gonna get my square or cube drawing tool, excuse me. I'm gonna turn off my O snap so it doesn't click on anything weird, and I'm going to draw the width of my handles. And I'm going to bring it through the tube. There it is, see that? It's moving through it. So if I subtract this shape from this shape, I'm gonna end up with those open holes like we have on the sides over here and over here, right? But what I wanna to do to make them fancier is I want to fillet the edges of this so I have those curved edges. So let me hide all of this, zoom in, and you can see what I am about to do. I'm gonna fillet the edges of this cube. So we're gonna to go to the fillet tool, we're going to give it a radius of, let's say, an eighth of an inch, 0.125. We'll see how big that is. And we're going to select this surface and this surface. And it didn't do it. Probably too big. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to say fillet surface, and I am going to go 0.065, which is, a, uh, I believe, what, almost half of that dimension. See if that's small enough. That first one might have been. There we go. So <clears throat> now you can see that fillet that's taking place. See that? that round over will now be a smooth place for your hand to go or your action figure's hand to go. I'm even gonna go smaller than that though. And I'm gonna go up here to my solid menu and I'm gonna say fillet edge of a solid because it's faster. I can actually select just edges instead of two surfaces. So I'm gonna go to solid fillet edge and I'm gonna type in 0.05. And I'm gonna select all four of the edges Right, you see that? Right click or enter. And now, boom, we have a filleted edge box intersecting with our cylinder. Now I'm gonna go to my Boolean difference, select the object I wanna keep, right click, select the object I wanna get rid of, right click. Oops, I didn't do the first right click correctly. My mouse is not really functioning very well, so I need a new mouse. First set of surfaces, select the second set of surfaces. There we go. Check that out. So now we have, the object is still there. I have to delete it. Boom. But look at those sexy handles. <laughs> if I uh, unhide everything and zoom out again and just kind of assess our work thus far, this is what we have. Pretty cool, huh? Now again, you can take these concepts I'm showing you and get super hyper detailed if you wanted to, but this is a propane tank and we just need the basic shapes to work. Now I'm gonna use that same concept with a cylinder and cut out over here. So I'm gonna go from this view because I want the cylinder, you know, the, the, I know the first uh, size that I'm gonna start with is the radius of the cylinder. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna kind of pick the point that's where these surface lines intersect. And I'm gonna draw the radius, oh, uh, whoops. So that point is not at the center of these handles. I want it to be at the center of these handles. So I'm just gonna kind of visually yeah, there we go, that's the center point of those. And then I'm going to click, then I'm going to drag it out to about the same height <clears throat> as those. I'm gonna click. I'm drawing a circle, not a cylinder. There we go, cylinder. <laughs> now I'm drawing a cylinder, okay, get with the Jordan. There's my center point of the cylinder. There is my radius. And now I can drag this through the back side. right, the back side, you can see it over here. Uh, and you can see it in the perspective view, it's going through the back of that top of the tank. I'm gonna click, and you can see what we did over here. There's that shape, and now I'm going to Boolean difference it. I'm gonna, the one I wanna keep, 
right click, don't want to get it cut through it, right click, click the object, get rid of it, ta-da, propane, looking pretty sweet. So <clears throat> at this point, I could just leave this be, and this is a pretty good 3D printable object, it's very simple, it's easy for most printers to handle, and you could go get a couple of pieces of dowel or bend a piece of wire and drill a hole right here and glue in what would essentially amount to a nozzle. But uh, for those of you who want to do a more challenging print, I can build a basic nozzle shape here. And then once it's done, you guys can you know finish it off however you want, um, paint it, glue it, whatever. But I feel like it would be easier to finish the object without the nozzle, right? So maybe what I'll do is I'll make an STL file available without the nozzle and an STL file available with the nozzle and maybe a little bit more detail. Maybe I'll put in, I will when I do my initial cross section curve where we follow the shape of this, like where we did this follow the shape of this, I will actually go in here and I will add in that weld line right there and go around. And so when I do my rail revolve, I get this welding line in it. Right, And then I can go in here and do some of this more complex stuff and make these little handle curve outs and make a more detailed thing and do this filleted edge here where it comes up. All these other little complex things that take a lot more time to kind of explain because I have to kind of figure them out as I go. I will maybe make a, th a simple version of the model printable and do a more complex version that is also printable that you can try and download. But I think simple is better, especially in a smaller scale. You don't need to go too nuts with detail. So let me just make a basic nozzle shape and I will show you what that looks like using the pipe command here. So uh, I'm gonna hide a couple of things here so that visually as I move around, they're not in my line of sight here. And then I'm going to um, get a polyline again and I am going to turn my O snap on. I'm going to select the, qu the quadrant here, the top of this uh, propane cylinder. I'm gonna draw up to the center point of the handle space uh, or this or I should maybe I should pay more attention to the, um, the cylinder that I cut out here this circle that I cut out and go to the roughly the center of that boom and then I want the nozzle to go this way right so I'm gonna stop it maybe right there and then look what I just drew can you see that there right here let me make it bigger <clears throat> there is this L shape basically that I drew right here, where the nozzle can go, I can make that into a pipe. So I can go to, let me hide these other objects so you can see what's going on. Hide these and let me hide these curves. We haven't needed those since the beginning. Boom, okay. So that's that L shape I just drew. If I go over here to my solids and I click on this pipe command, going to ask me to select a curve to create the pipe around. This is the curve. Even though it's two lines and they don't curve, it's defined in the three-dimensional space as a curve. <clears throat> so if I click on it, this also asks me for a radius. I'm just going to guess right on this one. I'm just going to drag and click. I'm not going to type in a numerical value. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to click it and I'm going to click the second radius. And if I just hit enter, it'll do the same radius and check it out. I now have a pipe with a 90 degree angle in it. Now, if we look back at our picture, this nozzle, it's it's flat and then it has, it's like a T-shape really that's turned sideways with a valve on top. I'm gonna do that here. I'm just kind of demonstrating to you the basic concept of the pipe so that you understand what I'm attempting to do with the pipe. Oh my goodness, there we go, okay. My right click is not functioning correctly on my mouse. So I'm going to not do that. I'm going to unhide all my objects, zoom out, and I'm going to delete this poly surface or these multi-surface object I just created, delete this, hide this, and I'm going to hide this, and I'm gonna do this again. <clears throat> but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw two lines. So I am going to draw the vertical portion of the nozzle gas pipe directional whatever thing. <laughs> Uh, those of you who know propane and propane accessories can tell me in the comments what it's called. And I'm going to basically drag it to the height that I want it, which I looks like it's almost to the top of the handle area. And what I'm talking about, guys, is this 
straight line piece in the back here, not this piece coming at us with the straight line in the back here. I'm going to uh, turn off my oak snap and I'm going to stop it eh, right there. See that? There's, if you can see it right in here, there's a little line in the center right there. That is what we are focusing on. Now I'm going to draw another line from the center point of that line, which is right here. I selected the midpoint of that line and I'm gonna drag it out, turn that other snap back off to where I wanted that nozzle to be right here. Boom. So now I've got my vertical line and my side line, which is like my T-shape. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna add a little bit of detail to this. Once it's printed and it's very tiny, um, it will look better than it's gonna look here in this blown up 3D program. But I'm gonna create a little bit of a nozzle section right here, um, and it's a little bit bigger than the pipe it's connected to, all right? And I'm gonna do that by first creating the pipe, like I showed you, I'm gonna select this line. I'm gonna go to my pipe command. I'm going to make it uh, yay big. And then I'm going to take this line, make this bigger. Take this line and I'm gonna to go to my pipe command and I'm gonna make it yay big and hit enter. And there is my pipe, my uh, nozzle. And then on the end here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cylinder uh, piece. I'm gonna turn my O snap back on so I can select the exact center of this circle. Boom. And then I am going to make a cylinder that is wider than it, and up here in the top view, I'm going to stick it out a little bit. So, check it out. Little bit of detail, kind of looks like a Lego gun handle or something. Pretty cool. And so, <clears throat> that will look cool once it's printed in a smaller scale. Now we need a little handle on top, and this particular handle is sort of a triangle with curved side shape. Well, guess what I'm gonna do for that? I am going to draw this shape as if I was drawing it two-dimensionally on a piece of paper, this shape right here, and we're gonna extrude it as a surface like you saw me do before. So, <clears throat> we are going to get rid of all of dish, get rid of this, and I'm gonna draw uh, from the top view what it's gonna look like around this. But if you remember, when I draw on the top view, it's gonna draw it on this bottom plane here, at the bottom of our axis here. That's fine though, because I'm gonna extrude it and then move it. So I'm gonna draw myself that basic shape right here. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see, let's do this. Um, and I'm going to hit F10 and get this point and drag it over here. And then I'm going to trim these lines really quick. Select them, hit enter. Oh, let me try this again. There we go. There we go. Man, that took forever. Okay. So I've got this triangle drawn. Let me join these lines together. Actually, I take that back. I'm just drawing a basic shape. And what I would do is I would kind of draw this line to cut off that size, and I would go transform mirror again, and I could select the uh, sides of my triangle and mirror those lines. And what I'm, you know, if you're confused, I mean, you think I'm drawing a star of David, I'm not. I'm just using lines to cut out other lines here. So I'm gonna use my trim command that I just used to trim this triangle down, highlight all of this, hit enter, and then I can cut, 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 boom, look at how fast that was. So getting really familiar with uh, what commands are available in your program will help you to work really quick. I just know these from using them forever, but I basically created this rough shape up here. And if I want to get super fancy, this, this actually curves in, right? So I can take an ellipse, I can go to the middle point, go to the outer point, 
curve it in. Look at that. Now that's not going to work, so let me make it a little smaller. Go to the middle point, go to not all the way out, and curve it in. Right? And what I could do is I could transform mirror, put it right there, mirror, put it right there. And I could cut this all out and give it those curves. Uh, and so where it would curve in and have that sort of place to grip it. I'm not going to do that because at 112 scale, I don't think it's going to show or matter. In 1.6 scale, it would. But we're going to keep this uh, model as simple as we can here for you. So I have all these separate curves or lines that I've drawn. I'm going to join them all really quick. I'm selecting the one above it. you got to be careful of that. I'm going to join them all. So now I have one line. I'm going to go create surface from planar curves. I'm going to delete those lines. And now I have this surface from planar curves. Now I'm going to go to my solids. I'm going to say extrude surface. And here I am extruding that surface again. I'm just going to guess on this and go right about there. I am going to take this in this top front view. See now it's, it's on the floor here. It's on the bottom of that axis or the bottom of this plane. I'm going to hit M. And I'm going to go into this front view and I'm going to move it up. I'm just doing what we've already done. I'm just doing it a little faster. So uh, if, you, if you're not catching this, you may need to watch the video again or maybe a couple of times over. I'm just doing what we've already done with a different shape that I drew a little faster. I'm going to unhide everything, and I'm going to take a look at how good or bad that looks. That, there we go. Not bad. So that's our basic uh, valve and handle. Now, <clears throat> I could take the time to make this really fancy and look super hyper real and put threads on. I could even put threads on this pipe and fillet the edges in between these pipes, put the curve on here, round the handle over, put a screw in there. I could do all that. But again, in 112 scale, you're not really going to see all of that, right? If I was moving up to 16 scale or bigger, I would take the time to do that. But this is intended for 112 scale. So I think that's as far as we need to take this model. Let me look at our picture again. We've got the nozzle, the valve stem, the um, valve, <laughs> the handle portion, the tank, and the base. I think that's all we really need to print a basic propane tank model, right? And then to make it look realistic, if you were going to print this and model it, you could print it. You could sand it or you could do a vapor bath while you basically surround it in like, you know, something that can um, melt the plastic a little bit to get rid of the resolution lines. And then you can sand it and you can paint it. You can paint it white. And then uh, what you can do is you can dunk it in some brown or some black paint to give it some weathering and put a sticker on it that says hazardous or propane or flammable. And then you can get in here with a brush and paint the top of this black and paint this gold. And there you go. And if you wanted to add rest of X, you could. That's really all you need to do, right? So for me, I was able to do this in about an hour, right? And I was also going along and explaining things. If I wasn't explaining things and I just did this really quick, I could probably bust this out in about 15 minutes, right? So once you get familiar with where the commands in your program are and what the commands do, you can fly through this stuff. It actually is pretty fast, but you really do have to put in the time to understand your program. And you know what the fastest way to do that it doesn't matter if you're using Rhinoceros like I am, or you're using Shaper 3D, or you're using 3D Studio Max, or you're using Blender, or using whatever you're using. Every program has tutorials. So if you go to Help, um, see where it says Tutorials right here? I can click Tutorials, and this program, this old version of Rhinoceros, walks you through a tutorial on how to build a flashlight in detail, and how to build a duck. Uh, a, slight, a slightly more organic shape. And from just those two tutorials, how to build a flashlight and how to build a duck, I learned basically all the stuff I would need to model most mechanical shapes and basic curvy objects. And that's most of what you need. So if you go to your program and you go to the help section and you click on tutorials, don't even worry about YouTube videos, right? Go to tutorials in the program and follow the tutorials, even if it's something you don't care about. Like you maybe you're like, here, we're gonna teach you how to make an umbrella, or we're gonna teach you how to make the wheels of a car. You're like, I don't wanna know how to make that. I wanna know how to make a propane tank. Give the program programmers and the guys who designed it a chance because it is likely that they designed those tutorials in such a way as to teach you each of these complex commands and how to use them, like the fillet, 
and the extrude and the draw a line and the polyline and the surface and the rail revolve and the Boolean difference and the Boolean add, right? Those types of things are going to inform you of how to use what's available to make whatever you want. And that's how I learned how to use a 3D modeling program. So another one last step I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to make this model watertight or basically 3D printable. I'm going to get rid of this line, get rid of this line that's still over here, get rid of this center line. And now we should just have one. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven 3D objects. So this upper portion is intersecting this cylinder and this portion is as well. We want to join these to make it one solid Boolean or one solid surface or one solid piece. So I'm gonna to go, to, go to Boolean union, this command I haven't used yet. I've used Boolean difference, but not Boolean union. So if I click Boolean union and I click on my cylinder and I click on the base and I right click or enter, look at that. It made them one piece. <clears throat> so now I can do the same thing up here. I can do Boolean union, check, click the handle, click the cylinder, and I made it one piece. So now all of this is one solid object. Same thing up here. If I click this, 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 and this, and I click Boolean union, they all become one solid object. You can see my lines are still in there. Let me delete those poly lines. Now, if I click this and this, they become, they do not become, what do they do? What did I do? Oh, it's because I drew my, um, if you zoom in here, see this? <clears throat> this tube stops before it intersects, so it won't join because they're not intersecting. So I'm gonna move my valve portion down into the cylinder a little bit so that they intersect, boom. Now, if I do a Boolean union, you'll see this is the, uh, the stem and this is the cylinder. I'm gonna zoom in really far so you can see the change. If I go Boolean union and I click, I select the cylinder line and I select the valve stem line and I right click, boom, they become one object. So now I have this propane tank, it is one object. Now, your program might have some fancier command like mesh or make a mesh or something like that, mesh based or solid based or solid model, where as you build, you may be extruding from the cylinder the shapes that I did, where I created each basic shape, right? The handle, the base, uh, the handle, the base, the nozzle, everything separately and cut shapes out of it and added shapes together and then join it all into one surface. Your 3D modeling program may like may be one where it's a SOLIDWORKS program where you're starting with the cylinder, you're shaping it, and then you're extruding, you're drawing on the cylinder and pulling those pieces out of the cylinder, right? There's a lot of different ways to do it, but the commands, the basic concepts are all kind of coming from the same place here. So now this is one solid piece that a 3D printer can understand. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it as an STL file so that a printer can recognize it. So I'm going to go File, I'm going to go Export, or I'm going to select it, excuse me, got to select it first. File, Export Selected, and I am going to, I have this file named Scale Miniatures. Um, I am actually going to move it to Euler's Workshop, and I have Digital Sculpts uh, ready, STL files, and I'm going to name this uh, 112 propane tank basic and I'm going to save it as a STL file right here stereo lithography that's what STL stands for let me zoom in can you see that right there do, 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 do. stereo lithography that is basically a 3d printing file right there's other files like 3dm it might be able to read um, or DXF, or even some might be able to read a 3D Studio Max file, I don't know. Um, but some of these different file types are things you just have to look into your own 3D printer and manual and see which ones it prefers. But STL is pretty much the most popular one because it's essentially a way for a program to understand the shape that it's about to create. Let me move my screen back. <clears throat> STL, and we're gonna click Save. File name is not valid because I put a colon in it probably. Save, there we go. 
And now you can choose, you can choose binary or ASCII. I'm just gonna stick with binary. I'm not gonna get into what that is because most things are not that, you don't need to know that. So I'm just gonna stick with binary, hit okay. And now see where it says polygon mesh options. It's gonna turn this into a bunch of polygons or a bunch of smaller shapes that follow the shape of this that I just created. And I can tell it to make it more complex or less complex or more polygons or less. I tend to, with most models, leave it in the middle, unless it's something that's got a lot of flowy lines and needs to, all that definition needs to appear, I would go with maybe more polygons. But because this is such a basic shape and it's very mechanical and linear, and there's only a few curves, I'm gonna leave it right in the middle. So not fewer, not more, but kind of just right, that Goldilocks zone of polygons. Hit okay, and we're done. We have made a propane tank. All right, I will make this STL file downloadable for you from my Etsy store. I will leave the link in my description for you to get this, and I will make sure that it's very, very cheap so you guys can get it um, and print it and experiment with it. Um, and uh, if you wanna make one of these yourself, um, in your own 3D modeling program, you can take the concepts and the ideas that I've used and apply them to your program. But I strongly encourage you to go to your help section and follow the tutorials in your program if you don't know what you're doing, because this will give you the best education on how to get started in your program. But the uh, concepts and ideas that I've used to create this object today should apply to basically every 3D modeling program. Um, again, like I said, this is linear. I'm kind of going view to view to view, I'm kind of drawing it and drafting it as I'm creating it and turning it into an object. A solid modeling program might take a slightly different approach, but again, all the ideas of intersecting shapes and sizes are the same. All right, that'll be it for our propane tank. I will see you guys next time.